For our group, we looked at spam and non-spam emails and looked through clustering with an HDB scan algorithm. As mentioned earlier, we looked at a spam email data set consisting of over four and a half thousand emails. They are split into categories as spam or not spam. What we were looking at was a way to find how to way to find identifying characteristics in the subsets to help differentiate emails between these two categories. And then this is a majorly large scale issue with millions being scammed and spammed every day. Being able to consistently identify a spam email would help prevent this problem in the future. We used T distributed T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding to pre-process the data. We chose this because there is a high dimensional data set visualization, high dimensional data set reduction, and it preserves a lot of the local structure. It also shows patterns in clusters not initially visible, and this aligned best with our goals to, to find the difference in clusters and patterns between our two subsets of data. Why did we choose HDB scan as our clustering technique? So HDB scan stands for hierarchical DB scan, which is better for higher dimensionality and higher density data sets. We have a very high dimension and high density, like our data set is very dense. So we wanted to use a version of DB scan that is better for that. Um, we chose that over k-means clustering because we didn't want to see any clusters that had a specific shape. We wanted them to be uh, density-based clusters that were going to be, you know, with the specific points that they should be with uh, density-wise. Jumping into uh, just some of the things that HDB scan allowed us to use, some of the visualizations that you'll see later. Uh, we have these listed here with soft clustering, minimum clusters, minimum samples, uh, along with uh, leaf clusters and being able to gray out some noise points. And then we jumped into a few trees being minimum spanning, single linkage, and condensed trees. So let's go over some of our key findings in each of these graphs. And these are a lot of graphs that we used from the HDB scan library. Soft clustering shows us a fuzzy rendition of the degree of membership of each data point in the cluster on, each, on the graph. The degree is shown by the opacity of the points. As you can see, there are two points to the far left on the spam graph. Initial key findings here are that there are some larger clusters in the spam, like the dark blue section, as opposed to the general lack of large clusters in the non-spam graph. There are about roughly the same amount of clusters in each graph, however. Another two fairly important graphs that we should look at here are the min cluster and min sample. Uh, these are adjusting for parameters that we are sending into the HDB scan function when we're declaring it. And um, this is something that you can kind of just adjust by sending in a simple integer value. So the min cluster size tells the HDB scan algorithm the number of points required to form a cluster. And as we can see above, setting this parameter to 28 allows there to be far fewer clusters, only one in the spam graph as opposed to 15 in our non-spam graph. We also see something similar with the min sample parameter. Uh, when we set that to 28, min sample is basically telling HDB scan how many points to uh, have located around each core point. Above, we noticed that again, there are far fewer clusters identified in the spam subset. So the major key finding here is that there is far less diversity in the spam subset with the spam subset having a much higher density data collection than the non-spam set, potentially leading us to believe that spam emails all share a fairly common characteristic with one another. Another important attribute to look at is the number of noise points that we see in our graphs when using the HDB scan algorithm. Uh, for this, we passed along a minimum cluster size of 15 to the HDB scan algorithm to produce a lot of gray noise within our graphs here. Uh, one thing that we notice is that with the noise points, we were able to identify a much smaller amount of noise within the spam graph. This means that the data is likely more focused and less variable within the non-spam graph as opposed to a lot of the gray dots up there in the spam graph. Now the last and probably most important implementation of HDB scan that we're going to look at here is the three trees, the min spanning tree, single linkage tree, and condensed tree. So what are these different trees telling us from top to bottom? The minimum spanning tree shows us different branches representing each cluster, as well as the length of the branches telling us the distance between each cluster. You can kind of see that above with the yellow and blue lines, predominantly yellow and blue lines between each of these major branches and the purple branches. 
the single linkage tree tells us how the data points in our two subsets are grouped together based on their pairwise distance. The height of each branch represents the distance between the clusters that are being merged in log number of points. In addition to this, the vertical axis of the tree shows the height of the branches and the horizontal axis shows the data points in the data set. The horizontal black lines are different branches and the colored lines are the number of points between each branch. Overall, the tree can really help us identify what points are more similar and which points are more dissimilar. The condensed tree shows us a very similar image to the linking tree, single linkage tree. However, it is more efficient because it only shows the nodes that are relevant for selecting minimum cluster size. Uh, the major takeaway for this, all of these trees, is that since there is noticeably less branches within all the trees for the spam emails, data points must be more tightly clustered with, have, with having fewer outliers. This is beneficial because it shows that spam emails are more similar with one another as opposed to the non-spam emails. Um, just talking about some future work that we'd like to do. So ideally, uh, we might be able to develop some sort of text mining application that could go a little further and be able to recognize some of the words that actually exist in those spam emails be able to help just identify some of those similar trends um, and also if we really wanted to get into it and develop some sort of commercial product it could be some sort of machine learning algorithm uh, to actually learn those common characteristics to help identify those spam emails so uh, with that that's our presentation thanks for listening